Andy Scott talks about one of the big hits from Sweet, Little Willie from the early days. I'm John Bone from Rock History Music. In North America, we did not get all those early sweet hits. Little Willie, however, was a big hit in North America. We talk about that with Andy Scott. Little Willie, again, a song that when I was young, I would have been, I don't know, 12 when I first heard that. It was another one that made me stare at the speakers. Tell me about that one. This was the last track. Um, the sweet were at a point of um, uh, telling everybody to basically go away and leave us alone because the early real early bubblegum singles that we had released in 71 were sessioned you know phil wayman had a bunch of session guys that he worked with uh, we might get to put some hand claps on there or might have done a tambourine i think i put an acoustic guitar on one one track but, but let but me interrupt came... you let me interrupt you why because you guys could play but why yeah well you, when you turned the record over you could certainly hear that we could play you know, on the B-sides and things like that. But Phil, three hours, we're going to make this record. Didn't think that in the, in the studio that we would make the right kind of record. And he's probably right. We probably wouldn't have made um, uh, Coco or Papa Joe, those, those kind of Cat Caribbean songs, the, the, the way that he ended up making them. When he came to Little Willie, it's the who, if you want it to be. You know, it's, it's us. And F Mike wrote it with that sort of can't explain type who riff, but, which is hidden. Were you guys it doing the who medley back then? Were you guys doing the who medley yeah. back then? Yeah. 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 See, M Mike, Mike is very, a very clever man. He's feeding off, you know, what he's hearing and what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and when we had to do Top of the Pops, this was in the era where the, the Musicians Union had done this deal with the BBC where, any act that goes on top of the pops, they have to have performed what they're going to perform on top of the top of the pops. Don't mind my, you mind me to a backing track, but it can't be the record. If 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 the band didn't play on it, then you'd have to have those session musicians up on stage with you. Well, people were getting around this, but uh, in our case, we happened to get a little bit of a stickler come to the session. So we re-recorded Little Willie the way that we were kind of doing it live, a little bit heavier, uh, with a little bit of um, help from a, from a keyboard player friend. And so the version that you, you heard on Top of the Pops was us playing, not the session guys. And that's what carried it up into the top five, because the subsequent records after Coco, which went to number two, didn't really just about made the top 10 or, you know, th there was one record, which I think just about ba barely broke, broke the 30. So Little Willie was a, a real testing point. And I actually think that there was Mike on one side saying, you, should, you need to let the band play on this. And Phil saying, no, nope, you know. So after the, the success of Little Willie, I think that's when everybody went, right, uh, wig, wham, bam, you know, it's the band. And you can hear the transition, you know, all of a sudden yeah. you've got a band, you know, and we're taking off, you know. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. More from Andy Scott coming up in the next three, four days. And buy a Rock History Music t-shirt really helps support this channel. Links at the very top of the description. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.